Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Whitney Parsons and today I'm going to be taking you through an introduction to Parallels Mac Management for Microsoft Config Manager. This webinar is designed for IT administrators that understand endpoint management is a challenge and something that most IT departments need to get better at doing. Additionally, you probably have a bunch of Macs in your organization that are either unmanaged or in a less than managed state. The goal of this webinar is to provide you with the information you need to educate your directors, your CIOs, and the people that handle the budget to get a project like this done for your organization. We'll be covering why endpoint management at all, why Mac management, and we'll give you a lot of statistics and information that you can incorporate into your own presentation for your decision makers, because we all report to someone and we all have to quantify budget need for IT spend. The first part of this presentation is to arm you with that information. You found us here, so you understand that Mac management is something essential for your organization, and we're here to help you make that case. So with that, let's get started. I like to start by showing you what an IT roadmap looks like. You're in it, so you obviously already know everything starts with a problem identification. Do I have an issue with Mac management? Then you search for solutions, which is likely how you found us. You're going to be doing a needs assessment. Do we have 20, 30, or 180 Macs? How do we go ahead and work this? Then you're interested in a demonstration. You want to see how the product works. If you have a lot of Macs in your organization, or you have a complex Active Directory structure, or something else like that, you're going to want to trial a solution, or even do a proof of concept, where you use it for longer than the regular trial period, maybe six months or so, in order to really figure out if it's going to work for your larger organization. Then, you get the proposal from us, and hopefully, you go into purchase and implementation. That is the process we see with most IT organizations. However, as you're racing through the track, trying to hit all the stops, often customers get the proposal, they've done the demo, maybe even the trial, and yet they don't make that final purchase or go on to implementation. We often hear this from IT professionals. This is an important thing for us, but I don't have budget for it right now. It's gonna have to wait until next quarter or next year or we just don't have enough Macs to do this. We only have 50 and my boss isn't going to allow me to spend X amount of dollars just to protect 50 Macs. And that falls on us. That falls on us as a vendor, as a solution provider, and as a trusted partner to your organization. The reason it does is because we are often focused on the features, the bells and whistles of what our product actually does. But what we forget is the reality that you're involved in on a daily basis. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Your internal IT department is pulled in a hundred different directions. Your budget is stretched thin across a multitude of projects and different user groups. And for you to go ahead and focus solely on Mac management isn't realistic. You've got all these other things, big data, cloud services. You have the endless issue with security, and now end user satisfaction. It's no longer enough for help desk tickets to just get closed. Now you have to make sure the end users feel good as well as close the ticket. IT budgets are also an issue. They're always trying to get you to do more with less. This is the day-to-day -day you live in. What we have found is for something to get on the IT budget, it has to be exciting. Things like cloud-enabled applications, big data, or end user experience, all these things you know, all these buzzwords, things that IT directors and C-level people are really interested in. Unfortunately, we know as Parallels, and you probably know as an IT admin, that endpoint management is the vanilla ice cream of IT projects, and pretty much everything else is more exciting. We understand that. And we understand it's a challenge because your boss's eyes kind of glaze over when you're talking about pushing OS updates to Mac devices or making sure your Macs have the latest patches released by Microsoft. So what we're going to do is not attempt to make Mac management exciting because we all know that can't happen, but 
we are going to make it essential and we are going to make it scary to not engage in a project like this because what we can do with PMM is provide you the capability you need to cover all your bases. We're going to talk a lot about security. We're going to talk about how we can provide the security you need on your Mac devices. We're going to help you reduce the spend on your budget so you can have more to spend on other things that your directors and end users find exciting. The ability to let your end users choose or bring their own device to your network and for you to update it, to manage it, and to secure it leads to end user satisfaction and happy end users give good reviews and ratings, allowing you to meet the KPIs that are now part of organizations. So, where do we start? We start with the reality of security. Breach is a huge problem. If you look on any news feed, everywhere is talking about the latest breach that happened. IDC and IBM released a joint report a few years back. 50% of all networks they found for enterprise clients have been breached in one way or another. 70% of those breaches started at an endpoint and 90% of those breaches were patchable, meaning the patch already existed. It was just not applied within the organization in a timely enough manner to protect them. This is the reality, and there's a list of reasons for why that happens. There's the whole process that patches have to go through internally in order to get pushed out to desktops. But the challenge is, it's not getting any better. As of this writing, there are now over 5,000 vulnerabilities in the National Vulnerabilities Database that have been opened just this year. And that's on top of all of the ones that already existed. Breaches are a daily challenge, a daily issue, and a daily occurrence that happens within our networks that we all have to be on guard for. In the next couple of years, endpoint security spending is dramatically increasing. In 2015, it was $850 million, which is already a lot. But by 2023, it's going to be over $10 billion. Why is that? Why are people spending so much on endpoint security? You know the reason, and the reason is when a bre breach happens, it costs money. It costs money, and it's also a PR nightmare especially if you're a public company or if your customers are exposed to the breach. It's a super challenge we all face today. And this is why organizations are spending so much money on security now. The major challenge for most organizations is that a lot of them are mostly covered because 70% of the company is utilizing Microsoft System Center to manage window devices. If you've got a majority of window devices, you think, I'm pushing out my updates, I'm doing all the stuff, I'm covered. Well, the problem is that you can easily deploy updates and patches to your PCs to protect yourself against threats, but what are you doing to protect those Macs? How are you pushing that stuff out to the Macs on your network? That's the major challenge and can be one of the hardest things to do within an organization. We all know that doing nothing is not an option. Some of you may be doing that right now, even though you know it's not a good idea. Leaving Macs to their own devices is a recipe for disaster. And there's a reason for that. Although desktop market share for Windows is over 70%, the challenge is the thought that since 70% are Windows, right? So as long as I protect those, I'm good. Well, that trend is falling. Just 10 years ago, 90% of business desktops were Windows-based, but Macs are growing in your organizations. That's because when you ask a new end user, especially younger generations that are coming into the workforce, you ask them what they want to use. 72% say they want to use a Mac. It's what they've been using in their colleges, in their trade schools, their coding schools. It's what they're used to and what they know and they want to bring that capability to your organization. How are you going to do that if you're a majority Windows network with no Mac management? Here's the real world of today. It used to be enough that you got the ticket closed. 
IT departments were looked at by how quickly did you close the ticket? That was your KPI. Then a couple of years ago, they started to look at more than that. Do you have detractors in your community? People who don't want to use IT? What percentage of people are passive? They can take it or leave it. And are there people who are promoting what a great experience they had? Recently, both of these combined, and there's now something called customer effort. Basically, it means after each interaction, end users are asked, does the IT department make it easier for you to do your job? The challenge is that for most IT admins who live in the config manager world, PCs are easier to manage. So naturally, PCs are preferred by IT. A quarter of replies to Derek's question were max over my dead body. But if what you are telling your end users is no, you can't have a Mac, are you really making it easier for them to do their job? What are they saying in their reviews? I came here from college, I got a job as a designer, and the first thing I had to do was turn in my Mac and get a PC. Even if it was a Surface, and even if it was great, they're used to using that Mac. So are you making it easier or harder for them to do their jobs? So here are your two options as we see it. The first is a bad choice, and the second is a bad choice, but in a different color. You can manage your PCs in Config Manager and leave Mac users to their own devices. Or you can manage PCs in Config Manager and then buy a separate third-party console that you need additional training, resources, and investments to make successful. It's impossible to trust Mac users to manage their own OS updates. If you did a survey right now of Macs in your organization and asked how many are on Safari, how many are on El Capitan, Catalina, it would be all over the place. Not to mention the application updates they haven't done. You also know that asking Mac users to bring their Macs into the help desk to get them updated isn't realistic either. First of all, most of us are working from home nowadays and those who aren't probably aren't gonna reply to your email. Who knows what's on that Mac? You can only guess. So that is the first bad choice. The second bad choice is you have to go ahead and buy a totally separate console to manage your Macs. We call it Yappos, or yet another piece of software. And how do you choose which one is good for you? Which one will be the easiest to implement? Which one can you get trained on the quickest? So back to that statistic that 90% of breaches have patches available. It's hard enough in a Windows environment to get those patches pushed out because you have to test them against your internal applications, your internal image, and all that other stuff. You have to make sure the patch to fix one thing doesn't break another. If it takes 40 to 60 days after discovery to get the patch updated, updated in a Windows environment, what are you gonna do if you have a second console and a completely different team managing that console? How are you gonna manage all those patches for all the same applications through a second console? It's a completely different process. So what we say here at Parallels is you can keep calm and manage everything in Config Manager. Mac and Windows, side by side. With our plugin, we allow you to leverage the infrastructure that you've already invested in and trained on to fully manage Mac computers. You gain control of those Macs, just like your PCs. Mac endpoint discovery happens right along Windows discovery. So as soon as the Mac logs onto the network, it shows up in your console. You can extend existing MEM infrastructure, processes, and skills. You can manage Mac computers, their discovery, distribution, and inventory, just like PCs. And the best part is you can provide yourself and your team the best Mac OS management capabilities available. Why? Because we're parallels and we've been running Windows on Mac for over a decade. So we have a great relationship with both Apple and Microsoft. So now we're gonna move into what Config Manager actually looks like with PMM installed. And Danny, our engineer, is going to take you through this. Thanks, Whitney. Um, 
I think this, the case has been stated. There's a lot of reasons why you should be considering full endpoint management. I mean, just the fact that you would never leave a Windows endpoint unmanaged, the same reasons apply uh, why you shouldn't leave a Mac unmanaged. And to be able to achieve that with the amount of infrastructure and investment that you've already made in Configuration Manager kind of only makes sense for a Windows dominant environment. So in the next couple of slides, we're gonna show you what that looks like. So um, let's move on and see what we have to manage inside of Configuration Manager now. Well, this kind of looks like what you're already doing, right? Uh, in the background, there's Configuration Manager. If you notice up on the top toolbar, there's a Parallels Mac Management Tools section. We put into uh, Parallels um, all kinds of ways to manage Macs, but it really only makes sense if you're going to use Configuration Manager to use some of the native workflows that are built into Configuration Manager. And that's really what we're doing is linking those together. So when an endpoint does show up that we can manage with our agent, it is going to utilize a lot of the same right clicks. And if you notice uh, the, the same tab set there for properties now has something for file vault, has something for wipe and lock. Uh, so we are bringing a lot of uh, the native underlying workflows up. Uh, so that way the configuration manager administrators use the same tools, the same processes uh, to manage their Mac endpoints. For Mac management, uh, a lot of that you know, being brought up into Configuration Manager uh, revolves around compliance. How do we get our endpoints uh, that look like Macs <laughs> to look like Windows devices, right? That's usually the question. We know what to do for Windows devices. We don't know what to do uh, for Macs. And so we utilize configuration items in baselines against collections of Mac devices. We can discover and enroll those devices, get our agent onto them, and then we can go into enforcing Mac OS compliance with a lot of very Mac-centric ways of doing that. We also have an MDM that we attach to Configuration Manager that allows us to deploy mobile config files as configuration items against those Mac collections, uh, which gives us a very well-managed Mac device in an Apple-centric way. When we have our agent on a Mac, we can also go into full inventory and reporting processes where we utilize our agent to bring that information up into Configuration Manager into the very same site code DB. So you don't have to stand up a Mac Mini and have SQLite to achieve that inventory process since you already have the full infrastructure of Configuration Manager, including your site code database. We can use that as well for inventory and reporting. For software deployment, we utilize the same processes as far as application and packaging processes. Uh, we can right click and create a, a software application deployment. We can right click and create a package deployment process. With the application side of things, we can do things in the available context. We can use uh, detection methods. Uh, that way we have a very smart and logical approach to is the old software there? Is the new software, you know, is it the most current version? Which one do we want to have? All that is evaluated. So that way, you know, we take advantage of a lot of the same feature sets uh, for creating an application or a package. Uh, because we also have uh, capabilities with our MDM attached to Configuration Manager, we can also use the volume purchase program from Apple and synchronize that content in for application delivery. On the right-hand side, we see our Parallels application portal. That's where we can stream available content, including volume purchase program. So available applications. And if you utilize our task sequence process, non-OSD task sequences can also be delivered there. So this becomes a, a full rich experience for end users to self-select and self-install, and they don't need to be admin administrators to do software installations. The application will carry that process along, so it makes it very easy for them uh, to select software and uninstall it as well. For Mac OS image deployment, we can do that. We have capabilities of creating an OSD image uh, in a thin modular method and then bringing that up into Configuration Manager and then utilizing the task sequence process. We can do that all the way up into Catalina and give a, a full uh, kind of a light touch process, if you're familiar with that, in almost an MDT style where you, you build a nice, clean, thin, modular image. 
it gets turned into a WIM file. We can then add it to the WDS, the Windows Deployment System process, leverage task sequences, utilize Pixie, uh, a lot of the underlying architecture that should be there for a distribution point to push that image out. So you can come up with a gold image and then many task sequences that would maybe deliver a uh, developer image, maybe a, you know, HR image, a finance, uh, a, a corporate image uh, based off of individual task sequence steps. So it becomes a very modular approach to deploying images out to Mac endpoints. Software updates. Whitney spoke to this. This is a uh, kind of a black box area, right, where we don't know what is happening to that Mac, right? We don't know if it's patched. We don't know if end users are going out to the app store. Are they taking care of the, the Mac endpoint for, you know, for all of its patching and security needs? Well, we don't let that happen on the Windows side. Why should we let that happen on the Mac side? We can integrate a software update point role utilizing your WSUS infrastructure to know uh, what needs to be patched. Uh, we have a Mac agent, it reports telemetry for operating system and patch status. And then based off of the evaluation of all that content, we'll know if it's uh, compliant, required, not required or unknown. And then we simply do right clicks on each of the, the requireds to create a software update group. We can use ADRs for automated deployment rules. Um, we can uh, fully, you know, get a Mac underneath the authority of the uh, software update point role with WSUS to give you the same right click experience uh, that you uh, deliver out your patch Tuesday process. So that way you control what needs to be patched. The end user is taken out of the equation for this process. The only thing they'll see is if needed a reboot notification where they will be asked to uh, shut down and reboot or if maybe it's just a log out and log in. But if not, it'll just patch and update in the background because it didn't need a reboot. So we can fully control that process here out of configuration manager. Remote management for the case maybe where um, you need to get onto the device as uh, administrator. This isn't shadowing or screen sharing where the end user sees the mouse moving around on the screen. This is for the true administrator who simply needs to do some things either at the GUI level, right, over VNC. We can get out to a login profile, use administrative credentials, or we can use SSH, which is PuTTY, uh, for the terminal and then log in at the command line level, which is very helpful if in the case, maybe in a lot, you know, some of our schools, we've, we've had these reports come in where uh, students have downloaded things, maybe they shouldn't have. Um, an administrator can log in without any announcement to that end user, they can, uh, they can patch it, they can remove whatever's been added to it, maybe take somebody out of a, a root or, um, administrative role and put them into a standard user role uh, so that way we can regain the ownership of that Mac endpoint um, all under kind of under the radar so to speak so that way uh, an administrator has full administrative rights for remote management. Then for system requirements, um, pretty standard uh, for what we cover there as far as uh, configuration manager MEM. Um, we are uh, up to date with branch versions. Uh, we do follow that cadence uh, from Microsoft as well. Um, and then operating systems. Uh, we are uh, supporting up to Catalina, currently um, developing for Big Sur as well. So uh, we will have that capability for management onto the Big Sur platform once it is released from Apple. Well, yeah, what's included, right? There's a lot of things that have been talked about today. You know, if you do go into a POC or maybe a purchase from us, we do include remote installation. Uh, we can set up a time and then assist you with discovering what your needs are, what environments, uh, you know, uh, what types of, um, you know, configurations you've got set up and then uh, help you out with that install process. Uh, assisted upgrades as well. You know, we do release a couple of uh, versions uh, each year. So we do have that process. And then 24 seven support is also included. So everything uh, that we've been talking about today falls underneath that, uh, that full uh, assistance uh, that's all included. Right, so currently on version 8.5, which brought in support for Mac OS Catalina. As I mentioned, we are working on Big Sur. Uh, other processes uh, include the App Store um, uh, for volume purchase program configuration. Um, also like to note that we are actually on version 8.6, um, and then that also included iOS and iPadOS management. 
uh, but able to uh, have granularity on asset inventory uh, through custom reporting. Most administrators will know that as MOF or MIF files. So we can, we can actually tell, you know, how many T2 Macs are out there, bring all that information in. So we take normal inventory and then extended inventory. Um, we have full support for Active Directory Red Forest Design, which is the most secure AD structure. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, during our install process, we can tell which types of Active Directory you have and then be able to install to it automatically. And also taking advantage of IPv6. A lot of uh, our IPv4 space has been taken over. Uh, so many you know, endpoints out there, whether they are phones, tablets, uh, computing devices, whatever they are, uh, taking over the IPv4 space. So again, if we detect um, during our install that you're IPv6, we just naturally will go with that for the install process. And as mentioned, we do upgrade twice a year with new feature sets and then also have, you know, of course, hot fix rollups and patching and all that stuff is all included. Thanks, Danny. So I'm sure you're thinking everything sounds great, but what does it cost? Well, we like to be upfront about this and give you the cost now so you can share it with your directors and show them just how much it'll cost to get all your Macs managed. So this is MSRP for you. If you are a for-profit organization, it is just $3.75 per device per month. And if you are an educational customer, it is just $2.50 per device per month. We are a yearly subscription software and we do offer multi-year discounts. We work through the reseller channel, so when you're ready for pricing, we can help you obtain that through your reseller of choice. So, will Parallels Mac management suit your needs? There's a couple of ways for us to look at this. First off, we can provide customer references and case studies for you to compare use cases with. We have organizations from multiple verticals that are using PMM in their environment. Government, higher ed, K-12, retail, healthcare, etc. All of these are majority Windows networks that are using Config Manager and were able to take control of their 10, 50, or even 1,000 Macs. One education customer is currently managing 6,000 Macs with Parallels Mac Management. So, what are your next steps? You can check our calendar online to sign up for the deep dive demo. It can be found at the same place you found this demo. It's a much more technical look at PMM with Danny. He shows you how to use specific features, like how to wipe and lock, how to push out an OS update, and more. If you have over 500 Mac endpoints, we offer a trial that you can start right now. If you have special requirements or are interested in a longer pilot program, you can contact us as well to get that set up. We'll be sending you a thank you email after this webinar, so you'll have our contact info and can reach out to us. Our business development manager will also be following up to answer any questions and provide any additional information you need. Lastly, you can also get a quote from your reseller of choice. All of the large resellers and many smaller local resellers are authorized to sell Parallels products. If you reach out to them, they can provide you with pricing right away. Let them know you need a quote for 500 Macs for Parallels Mac management, and they can help you out. If you need a reseller, we can also help with that as well. So to wrap up here, we are a plug and play integration with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. If you're using Config Manager already, we work with your existing infrastructure. We support both current branch and legacy Config Manager versions, so you don't have to be on a specific version to incorporate us. It allows you to control your Macs on your network, just like PCs. But we still give you the option for advanced Mac capabilities because Macs are a bit different. It's a super short learning curve. We don't ask you to sit through a long certification program. If you know Config Manager, you already know how to use PMM. And we hope to reduce the total cost of ownership because you're not buying a third party application. You don't need a specific Mac admin. You can do it all in one console. So this is Derek's information. Derek is our director of sales. You can reach out to him. He welcomes any conversations or questions you have. And then you can also reach our general sales team at U-S-E-N-T, like enterprise, 
sales at parallels.com. And like I mentioned, you'll be receiving a post event email with resources as well as a follow up from our BDM. If you have questions, please send them to us in the chat window. If you have more technical questions, please attend the deep dive demo with Danny and he will be able to answer those for you. If you have sales questions, let us know here and we'll be reaching out after this with answers. Thank you so much for your time today.